Zimbabwean environment is very challenging in many respects. Today, we look at a man who is a turnaround strategist, who has managed to produce results uh, using innovation, digital banking, and smart banking strategies. Dr. Lance Shingai Mambondiani is the MD and CEO of Bank ABC. He is a lawyer and banker with years of international experience at executive level. Lance has a combination of skills in financial markets, investment banking, private wealth management, corporate finance, business law, corporate governance, and economics. Welcome to the Legacy Building Leaders Show. And with us today is Dr. Lance uh, Mamondiani, the MD and CEO of Bank ABC. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Really, really, really an honor. Sure. Uh, Dr. Lance, uh, we're very excited to have you, and uh, you are renowned as a turnaround strategist. And would like us, uh, would like you to tell us a bit more about yourself in terms of uh, you know that thrust. I'm not sure if you can call yourself a turnaround strategist. I've only <laughs> yeah. been uh, I'm doing this at least for one bank that yes. I know of uh, that, that right. we managed to um, be a part of a turnaround story. Yes. Maybe if I turn around Bank ABC, I can claim the title of being a, a turnaround uh, strategist. But, but definitely, uh, um, uh, it's an exciting tag if people yes. believe that's, that, that's what I am. And, and right. uh, it's, it's, uh, um, it's an honor. It's an honor uh, to be viewed as that. Sure. What, what does it take to be a turnaround strategist? I, I think it's just really the determination to do something different with right. whatever opportunity. I, I strongly believe that uh, uh, leaders are called to serve at, at a particular time and also at, at a particular, uh, uh, um, you know, at a particular occasion in a company's history. Yes. And whatever opportunity you have to serve, I, I, I believe all of us, no matter where we are leading, whether we are leading as, uh, as school teachers, headmasters, or CEOs of, of a corporate, or a president, yes. or a minister, we just need to really to use our energy, our passion, to contribute into making a difference into the companies that we are, we are privileged to, to serve at that particular time. And uh, that, that, that's my philosophy, that's my motto. Yes. Wherever I'm called to serve, I believe that I need to pour my heart out, mm. pour my, 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 my spirit and literally my, my entire energy mm. into making sure that, that, that I leave that asset a little bit better than I found it and, and, and that, that, that is my principle. And, and one of the areas that you are credited for is uh, digital banking. You are a thought leader. How, how have you come to be in that space? Uh, because uh, digital banking is now a key thing. Definitely. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, Look, I'm not necessarily uh, uh, passionate about digital banking. I'm passionate about digital transformation. And, and, and I think that that's generally uh, um, in all aspects of our lives. I believe that uh, uh, you know, the, the, the way that we are now living as a people, as a country, and as businesses has changed over many, many years. And yes. I always give the examples uh, 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 whenever I have the occasion to speak that if you look at how digitization has transformed our lives, we are never going to be the same again. You, yeah. know, it, no, no, uh, you know, digital transformation or rather digitization has transformed the way we consume newspapers. The way we consume music, the way we consume, you know, transportation, for example, with the coming of Uber, of Airbnb, and all these celebrated examples, yes. Apple being one of them that disrupted the music industry. Banking is no different because banking is just an example of any other business. I always say to uh, uh, my team that you know banking is no different than a supermarket. The only difference is that we happen to sell money and the supermarket happens to sell soap. Yeah. But, but ultimately we're in the business of providing some sort of service yes. that is required by the consumer. Yes. And, and with digital transformation, the only advantage that, that, that you have by transforming your business is that you want to get to the customer much, much quicker, much, much faster, and probably much, much cheaper. Yes. And, and if, if, you, if you look at the, those three dimensions, because people are interested in the service, yes. not in our building. So if we can right. offer banking services in a way that is quicker, that is smarter, and that is also uh, uh, cheaper, you're going to come to me yes. because that, that is what you're looking for. It's yes. exactly the same way that, that Uber has disrupted the transport industry mm. because it's a, you know, people are not interested in the taxi, in yes. a risky taxi. Yes. They are interested in moving from Kwazana to Mfakos. Yes. So whoever provides provides that service much, much quicker and much, much faster is who I'm going to go for. Mm. Mm. Wow. And, and your leadership has also been characterized by, uh, you know, provision of results in challenging environments. 
what kind of mindset does it take you know to win in challenging environments I'm, I'm, I'm very, very methodical and brutal about measuring each and everything that I do. And yeah. I, I think my, my philosophy and my principle is that you can't improve what you can't measure. Yes. So if you want to measure something, if you want to run 10Ks, you need to be able to measure that today I'm running 1K, tomorrow I'm running 2Ks until I get to my, my 10 kilometers. It's the yes. same thing with setting a target for, for anything that you want to achieve. Mm. Set the target. When then, then that myth, you know, you know, you need to make sure that you are brutal about measuring it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, until of course you achieve your target. When you achieve it, set another one and mm -hmm. make sure that you're continuously exceeding and improving. I think each and every day that we wake up as human beings, we have an opportunity and a fresh, fresh start, really, yes. to do something different. Yes. You now, what are you choosing to do? Are you choosing to be uh, uh, what you were yesterday, or are you choosing to do better than you do yesterday? And, yes. and, and I, I really, really honestly believe that uh, within each and every human being is the capacity to, to better ourselves, right. better our environment, better our companies, better our company, our, our countries, mm -hmm. better our families. Yes. In anything that we have an encounter with, we should have the uh, capacity or the drive or at least the determination to make it better. Mm. I, I notice, uh, Dr. Lance, you have been brought to Bank ABC to transform the bank and lead it into its next growth phase. And, and, and you are now talking of fresh thinking, smart banking. Mm. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, I'm extremely excited to have been okay. given the opportunity to become yes. part of the A team, as we call it, and Bank A. And uh, that is definitely our, um, um, our goal. Yes. I, I, and, and I think, um, I, I believe, as I said to you before, that when we are called to serve, I, I'm not called to, call to, come to serve for second or for third. Mm. We are, of course, aiming to go to the top of financial institutions. And we make no apologies for that. Otherwise, why am I here? Mm -hmm. And I think my, my ethos and my footprint, as you've said before, is that I, 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 I believe in one thing, I believe in transformation. And I also believe in at least providing some solutions uh, to, to the customers that we are privileged to serve. If we happen to be a successful institution financially because we are providing the solutions to Zimbabweans, yes. then, then that, 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 that comes. We never just manifest. Yes. We always chase the transformation and the provi provision of the solutions first. Yes. I believe that money will always follow a good idea. And I know what, what we are about right now is at least to tr transform the way that we can participate in the financial sector yes. in providing relevant and timely solutions that are contextual, at least to, to Zimbabweans, yes. at, at least to somebody who is in Mavuku who wants to do a, a, a financial trans, trans, uh, a transaction, mm -hmm. somebody in Gwabalanda who wants to grow their business, yes. or that, that, that go, go in Musikaweuku, uh, in, 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 uh, in Mutari, yes. who just wants to go to the next level. That's why banks exist. Mm -hmm. And I think we're just glad to be a part of this transformation. That's what we're here to do. If we happen then to be the most successful financial institution as a result of wow. those solutions we provide, yes. then, then we, we, we will be all, all the better and, all hap and, and happier. Wow. Wow. Dr. Lance Shingai Mambondiani, a legacy building leader and game changer. Welcome to the second segment of the Legacy Building Leaders Show. And we are now joined by two University of Zimbabwe students, Lancy and Gracious. My name is Gracious Zimiri, a third year medical student from the University of the Zimbabwe College of Health and Sciences. Nice to meet you, Gracious. Nice to meet you too. Hello, Dr. Lance. Hey, La uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm very fine. My name is also Lance. Yeah, I heard uh, you are Lancy. Yes, I'm Lancy. Lancy That's good. Lancy That's good. Part 2 2. Honours in Accounting at the University of Zimbabwe. Good to meet you, Lancy. Yeah. Right. And good to have both of you here. Thank you. Okay, so Dr. Lance, let's talk about your career. What influenced the shift and the transition? And what advice can you give to youths out there relating to purpose, careers, and achieving our goals? Uh, that, that, that's, that's a very loaded question, Gracious, but, but also one that I believe that is very, very important. I uh, believe that uh, a purpose is created, it's not uh, discovered. I always uh, I say to a lot of young people, you should not wait to discover your purpose, you should create your purpose. In, in, uh, uh, in, in many instances, I think people become successful in a particular discipline because they have chosen to spend so many hours practicing that discipline. And I, and I 
like always give an example of um, some of my personal heroes. If you look at Serena Williams for a women, probably the greatest athlete of all time uh, and also probably the greatest tennis player of all time. But uh, the father made the decision at a very, very young age that I wanted my daughter to be uh, the greatest tennis player of all time. And she started hitting the ball at age six, seven. Lewis Hamilton exactly the same thing until they spent, they started spending a lot of time you know, perfecting their purpose. And their purpose is uh, tennis, uh, uh, was tennis or, 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 or Formula One. So, so, so what I'm trying to say is that we should not wait for you to discover your purpose. Create your own purpose. If you look at me as an example, is that I trained as a lawyer. I didn't train as a, uh, as a banker, so I like to consider myself the outsider. But it doesn't matter what you actually study at school. What matters is how you're going to apply what you've studied into the future. So you can actually have studied law, studied medicine, and go on to become a president. You can study you know, law like me and go on to be, become a bank CEO. So it's important that we realize that the future is not a competition of knowledge. It's a competition of ideas and how you're going to apply yourself in whatever area that you have discovered or decided that is your purpose. Maybe when you grow up, you're going to decide that I'm going to be the greatest artist that ever lived in the country. Why not? It doesn't matter that you've got a, a, a medical degree somewhere in your drawer. What matters is simply what you're passionate about and what you're spending your time perfecting so that you can become better at it. You have had a very remarkable career and it has led and seen you in the rising to the summit of the corporate ladder at a very young age which is very impressive and very motivating to say what has been your secret and what advice can you give to the young people who are aspiring to grow and rise as leaders in society incredible question Lancy, and I, I, I absolutely believe that the, right now as we speak we are probably in, an, in a period in an era in which young people have the greatest opportunity you know to do greater things than we have had ever ever in the past if you if you look at the success stories that we're saying the greatest advantage that we have right now is youth and technology if you are a young person you're determined you, you 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 know what you want to achieve you can achieve it despite your age you can become a ceo despite your age you can become a tech billionaire despite your age what is simply important as far as i'm concerned is uh, is your determination in your drive to do something that that that, that is different being a respectable and renowned speaker and international speaker, what tips and advice can you give to aspiring speakers like myself and other youths out there? Good question, uh, but I'll, I'll say that I don't know. You see, I'm fidgeting in my chair because I don't know that I'm a renowned speaker or uh, 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 good at it. But I always believe that when you are on a platform, on where you have the capacity of sharing whatever you're sharing, always speak from your gut, not from your speech. Uh, I think it's always good and fanciful for us to have prepared speeches. I prefer to speak from the heart. So I never speak with a prepared, with a prepared uh, 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 speech somewhere. Sometimes I do, but in many instances where I believe that I have the capacity of impacting and you know, connecting with a person is when I share my story. I was saying to Dr. Mgawazi earlier that uh, um, as human beings, we like when we connect with somebody. And I like to, to teach or to speak a lot more from my failures than I do from my successes. Because I don't believe that you learn anything from where I've succeeded. You learn a lot more from where I have sacrificed and what I have sacrificed to become who I am. So, so, so when I'm speaking, I like to speak from the gut. I also want to make sure that I'm connecting, I'm being relevant, and I'm also just uh, uh, I'm connecting with you at that level where we can understand each other as human beings and not necessarily as PowerPoint presentations or not necessarily because I have a PhD. Because your PhD matters for nothing if you can't apply it and you become relevant and you actually become uh, 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 relatable to whoever you're speaking to. Thank you. What has been your greatest challenge as a leader and what have you done to maneuver, tackle or go through or around that problem? I think the, the greatest leadership challenge for anybody who is in a position of uh, leadership lands is failure. Every leader, no matter how good you are, you're going to fail in many instances. I've given uh, um, uh, examples that when you are a leader, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to rise, you're going to fall. So what do you do when you fall? You're going to have ideas that are going to succeed. You're also going to have ideas that are going to fail spectacularly. So, so what do you do when your incredible idea that you believe is going to change something becomes 
not or becomes nothing. You wake up in the morning and then you 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 get the determination to get better. The the, the greatest leaders for me uh, in history are those that have the capacity of rising up despite their failures, no matter what they do. Whether you get fired on your job the next day, it's not the end of you. You rise up the next morning and then you have determination to do better. Like 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 Edison, you try to do the light bulb, right? And then you fail 100, 300 times. And then maybe on the 310th time, you're going to succeed. So what do you do when your incredible idea that you believe is going to change something becomes not or becomes nothing? You wake up in the morning and then you, you, you get the determination to get better trying even in the face of adversity. That's what leadership is about, trying against all laws and trying when others have given up. And, and, I, I, and again, a, a famous uh, uh, statement that I like to say is that for you to achieve what gracious or the person next to you is not going to achieve, you need to be willing to sacrifice what the person next to you is not willing to sacrifice. That, that, that's where you actually then become successful because you have given just a little bit more than the ordinary person. If all of us were to try at the same level, all of us would be successful. All of us would be CEOs. All of us would be medical doctors. But somebody, maybe somebody likes sleeping just a little bit more. Maybe somebody just does not like to give just a little bit more than you would or to sacrifice just a little bit more. It's in that sacrifice that I believe that you will find your, your success. Thank you for that, advice. And, and maybe uh, Dr. Lanza, as we round this off, um, just following up on what you are saying, what do we need to do to, to mentor, to coach the, the next generation of leaders? Uh, seeing that you are bringing so much inspiration to young people and you have a passion for raising young people. What, 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 word, what advice would you give uh, to, to our listeners out there uh, in terms of uh, you know, empowering young people, particularly considering that we are a very youthful population and Africa is a youthful population. Absolutely, and uh, well, I think they say that Africa is the largest growing youth population. Yes. That is our advantage. Our advantage is that we have uh, uh, um, a lot of young people who are coming up. Yes. And, and what we need to do is to continuously teach them to be better and not really to uh, make the mistakes that we have done in the past. Yes. To really just, just have the power of accelerating and moving much, much quicker quicker and building much, much quicker than, than, than we have done. We, we also have the opportunity of leapfrogging a lot of nations who have gone through some of the challenges that we have. Yes. But uh, I, 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 I like um, uh, to say that one of the greatest challenges we have as a country and as a continent is that in some instances we apologize too much mm -hmm. for being aggressive, mm -hmm. for, being, for, for wanting to, be, uh, to compete with the best in the world. Mm -hmm. We cannot want to compete just by ourselves in our yes. little areas. If we are really going to be game changers, if we are going to, to really, really cause something that, that, that is going to, to change the world, we need to be as good in Zimbabwe as we are in New York, or as yes. good in Mavugu as we are in London. Yes. Once we do so, then we know that we are competing with the best, and we are as good enough here as we are in South Africa, as we are in, in whatever. So my determination in my little station as CEO is that I want to be as good enough as CEO in this country yes. as I am in South Africa or as I am anywhere worldwide. Because right. once we do so, then we have the capacity uh, to, to, to compete. And, and, and I, 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 I say this respectfully, that we are a humble people, a humble nation. But in many instances, humility is a virtue, but timidity is a disease. We should never really, really be timid yes. by, by, by wanting to be better and by wanting to be, to, you know, to, to go forward and to do uh, incredible things. And uh, my last word, I guess, is uh, that it doesn't matter our background. Mm. It doesn't matter where we've come from. It doesn't matter what we've been told in the past. Yeah. You could be from Dangambura like me. Yeah. All you need is just the determination to be better and the determination to do more, the determination to make a difference. Yes. That's why I always say, do good by you. When done, at least go out and do good by others. Dr. Lance Mambondiani, a determined legacy building leader, solution provider, innovator, and a man driven by service for his generation. I, 
I, I uh, was born in Mutare. I grew up in Sakupa. One of the places that really drives me is my grandmother, you know, who instilled on us, raised up about eight of her children, uh, thinking paid school fees for some of us so that we can be what we, what, what we are right now. Mm -hmm. so, so I belong to that generation of children that grew up, I mean, that, 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 were, uh, um, that paid their way, not because we grew up from rich families, but, but because uh, my mother was going to South Africa selling my doiris. You know, and so it's the determination of our parents and our grandparents that that uh, um, I drive or that really drove me to be different and to do something that is different, to give back to my country. I spent about ten, about eleven years in in the United Kingdom, and I, I decided to come back because I thought that I had a little bit of a contribution that I needed to make to this uh, uh, to this country and, and to this economy. That's why I'm here. So, mm -hmm. so I, 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 in as far as footprint and my intention, my intention really is not a build a legacy or a name for myself. My intention is just to make a difference. And if I can do so in the area that I'm called to serve, I know that I would have played my, my, my part as a leader. And I think that that is also my passion. Yes. That, and like I said before, no matter what station we are called to serve, if we are pouring and doing the best that we can in financial services, in, ra in, in transport, in telecommunications, in mobile money, in whatever, then we build a strong country. We don't build a strong country mm -hmm. by the, by, by because we have you know, a, a powerful president. Of course, we need to have a powerful president or mm -hmm. that we have powerful par parliamentarians or things like that. Mm -hmm. We build a strong country because individually, in our areas where we are called to serve, we are collectively, you know, we are doing good individually and then doing collectively as a country. Yeah. I mean, one of the challenges we face in Zimbabwe at the moment is negative thinking, where there's a very strong negative vibe. And I believe legacy building leaders are positive people, they are innovative, they are creative, they provide solutions and answers to situations that they face. Well, what, what can you tell us about that? Because you are very upbeat, you are positive, you are, I, 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 you are, you are full of energy. No, I'm, I absolutely am, and, and, and I think that, that that's what defines me as, um, in, in my perspective, really. I, yes. I, I do know that uh, there are many challenges that we face. I also yes. know that there are many, many problems that really makes it difficult for somebody who is uh, out there to wake up in the morning because you're faced with FOQs, you're faced with power cuts, and you're faced with many, many other things. Yes. But like I said before, within those challenges, Challenges is also our, our, our greatest opportunities. We have people coming in from other countries to look at how they can provide power solutions for this country. You know, the, the, the C, former CEO of ESCOM is exploring how to provide solar energy to this country. What are you and me doing? We, we are the citizens of this country. We have been faced with this problem. What are we doing about, you know, taking advantage of those problems that, that we have as a country and making sure that we provide the solutions. Yes. In many instances, business is simply one thing. It's when you get paid for the solutions that you provide. Right. If you provide right. a solution for something, in what country can you walk into in the world that has as many problems as we have? Yeah. So if you look at it from that point of view, you then realize that we are actually doing ourselves a disservice in that we are not being the solutions providers. We're concentrating a lot more yes. on our weaknesses than we are on our strengths, right. concentrating a lot more on our problems right. than on what we can actually provide as solutions to define those problems. Our I always say that uh, there, there are two types of people. There's one who sees the problem, there's another one who sees the solution. There's also within those two kinds of people, somebody who always have, always, always, at any given point, they will always have a problem for every solution. So if you give them something, they will tell you, they will tell you 30 reasons why it won't work, but they won't tell you how it should work. You know, and, and as, as this has always been said in many, many instances, you know, those who can't, you know, no, no, those who believe that it can't be done, needs to what? Make way for those who can do it, right? So, 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 and I think in our call as a people, as a nation, we need really to be trailblazers to thinking a lot more about how we can provide solutions for this country rather than, rather than concentrating on these problems. They say a pessimist is a person who sees a crisis in every opportunity, Absolutely. and an optimist sees an opportunity in every crisis. And I think the calling is to have as many optimists as possible yeah. who can open their eyes and proffer solutions and make Zimbabwe the great nation. It's Look, we, we, we only have one country. We if we can't country. make it work, you know, where are we going to live?
Yeah. You know, this is the only country that I can call home. I, 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 I know that many, but I've been in the diaspora. I know many of my friends and colleagues are in the diaspora. But you are never at home if you are in the diaspora. You're always the foreigner. You'll mm -hmm. never get the opportunities that you get if you are in the diaspora than you are here. Yeah. So, so because this is my country, this is where I was born. This is really where I believe that I need to make my call and I need to make my contribution. And if I can make my contribution in just a small way yes. that helps somebody just to see life a little bit better and yes. then allow them to wake up in the morning with full of determination and hope yes. for a better future, yeah. then I would have done my job as a leader. And I think that for me is what legacy building is about. It's not about yeah. building buildings, about building yes. empires. Yes. It's really about inspiring each other as human beings so that we are waking up and doing better than we did yesterday. Yes. If it's not us, then who? Then who? If yeah. not now, then when? Yeah. Dr. Lance Mambondiani, a legacy building leader and game changer. And the message is very clear. Let's all be the best in whatever we do. And the best that we have as a nation are our young people and technology. And we need to harness these in resolving all the challenges that we face. Let's meet next time on Legacy Building Leaders, a show that engages leaders who are leaving footprints of greatness. Thank you.